Thank you so much, Andrew Shaw, for joining me today. Uh, Andrew is a two-time cancer survivor as well as founder of Patient Power, uh, come all the way from the US to join us today in London. Um, Andrew, you uh, made a speech at our conference earlier, and during that speech, you told us that pharma is currently not engineered for patient connectivity. Can you just explain exactly what you meant by that and also what pharma needs to do? Hmm, okay. Well, let's take the easy part first. Uh, we're in the internet age. People are diagnosed worldwide. Some of them start speaking out on the internet, connecting with others. And as they get educated, many of them become powerful. What I like to call patient opinion leaders. They're out there, they're speaking to others, they're guiding others, and they're affecting what other patients think, even their discussions with their doctor. So that's happening all the time, and many of these people have no connection with a official advocacy group. They're simply a patient. And also, many of them are having pretty educated discussions with their own doctor, even if they're not on the internet, and that doctor thinks about what they said. Maybe new therapies are coming to bear because that patient advocated for that, and that has an afterglow with less activated patients who may follow even in that same clinic. That environment is happening now. Traditionally, pharmaceutical companies, if they've done anything with patients, they've made grants or had some goodwill relationship with advocacy groups. In many countries, in many diseases, there are no advocacy groups. And they really haven't gone beyond that to recognize that there are other players out there. They need to survey that landscape and begin to have relationships with these patient opinion leaders who are popping up more and more all the time. They're just not engineered for that. Now, what do you do about it? Well, first of all, I think they have to review their policies for patient communications and support of patients, or support through other independent groups of patients. And they have to make a long-term commitment to supporting people broadly with diseases and therapeutic areas that they have. Now, there are regulatory issues they need to go over, both internally and externally, but they need to confront that and see what can they do today in a new digital world. Very interesting. So patients have gone from really not having very much of a voice to being empowered and engaged, as you mentioned already, to actually now being seen independent of advocacy groups as being patient opinion leaders. Where, where does this go next? I mean, can you imagine uh, individual patients gaining far more power than they currently do and actually uh, almost organizing uh, a, a real uh, particular direction behind them? Well, you know, we've seen this. We saw this in HIV. When people took to the streets, people were dying uh, from HIV. They became mobilized, advocated for research and early approval of new medicines that could save lives. And I think now this is proliferating through other conditions. So I think you'll see it in cancers. You know, they say, well, it's older people with some cancers and they're not as active. But I think the family unit touched by cancer, whether it's the older person with cancer themselves, and there are younger people too, or their adult children, they will become more active. And the model of what happened in HIV, I believe will be in other conditions too. Well, that's obviously a good thing for everybody really, uh, if we start to see access to medicines to those who need it most. But what's the barrier? Why isn't this happening more quickly? Why hasn't this happened more quickly? I think it's because pharmaceutical companies generally are very traditional, conservative. Um, maybe they've been a little more aggressive where laws have been a little bit different in the US, but generally we're talking about a conservative industry and where there are great penalties if you get it wrong. Penalties within your own company or penalties with the government, huge fines, etc. And you have the media overlooking it with an industry that maybe doesn't have the greatest credibility even though some wonderful breakthrough medicines have been made because of some things that have been done wrong in the past, there are people ready to call them out, if you will, if they even suspect that something could be not right. Uh, so I think that's made people hesitant. So patients are going on on their own and we have a disconnect. So that really needs to change. I mean, I think that pharmaceutical companies make a long-term commitment 
to patient communities, these new patient opinion leaders, wherever they may be, the traditional advocacy groups, the physicians who are trying to lead research in the field and provide better care country to country to country, and do it with transparency and do it not trying to control the discussion, but facilitate the discussion, then I think they'll win. But surely no matter how close a pharmaceutical company is to that patient discussion, that patient opinion leader, if the regulatory environment is still very black and white and prevents a pharma company from being as transparent and as proactive as it might like to be regarding giving patients access, then are we really going to get anywhere? Do we not need something to change on the regulatory side, we on do. the public side? We do need that to change, and I think the patients uh, uh, who come together can be the best friend. We as patients, and I'm, as you mentioned, a two-time cancer survivor, we want information on the latest therapies and research. We want to be able to live well. We want to control side effects. We want to live a long, healthy as we can life, right? And our family wants that too. We do not want information restricted. So the old government regulation related to patient communications is paternalistic. It treats us as children rather than letting us, the ones with the diagnosis, have the power. What's wrong with that? We can't prescribe the medicines ourselves, but we should know what to be asking about, what to be finding out about. And in the age of more and more oral therapies across many diseases, now in cancer, fewer infused therapies, more powerful oral therapies, in a time when clinics will be jammed because the aging of the population, more chronic conditions, more chronic cancer, then we need to be given the tools to be more empowered, if you will, to take more responsibility for our care. So any restrictions on information for us, tools for us, whether they're funded by industry or funded, would be great. Let government fund it too, even though they claim they don't have the money for it. However it happens, the obstacle should be wiped away. And I think that's good for everyone.